Hi guys, I'm Tammy K. Welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about five strategies that you can apply today to help kick, <laughs> to help kick, to help kick. That was so weird. To help kick your art anxiety to the curb. Do I have your attention now? I hope so. Sometimes I'm just corny. Sometimes I'm just weird. And if you're watching this before August 21, which is next Monday, Christy Rice and I are gonna be doing a live and we're gonna be talking about five strategies to be an anti-perfectionist. So if you want to know what that means, definitely click the link down below so that you can be notified. And if it's after that date, you can still watch the video, the link is down below. The first thing is to just practice. And remind yourself this is supposed to be fun. When you are creating art, it's not a competition to show off how amazing you are, maybe it is. But when the mindset is, I must create something perfect, we end up getting a little bit nuts. We get a little bit pressured from our own self and usually the outcome is not what we'd like. So just kind of think about how you can create an environment when you're painting, when you are creating, so that you can just sit down and enjoy. And here's the thing. You're gonna make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. Make mistakes. It's actually a good thing. Do you know why? Because it helps you to learn from your mistakes, what you liked about your painting, what you didn't like, and what you don't wanna repeat. And if you can approach this, having a mindset of mistakes are part of the beginner's experience or the intermediate experience or the well-advanced experience, then you can embrace that and like just put brush strokes down on paper and have a good time. As a self-taught artist, I have had to learn through a series of mistakes and I continue to make them today. But I do realize, especially when people say, oh, Tammy, I love your talent. And I say, you know what? It's really not talent, I don't think. For me, it's just practice. So get the mindset, it's supposed to be fun and enjoy, stress-free. So number two is to allow yourself to create something ugly. I know, seems kind of weird. Who wants to create an ugly painting? But the mindset behind this is letting go of expectations, allowing yourself, as we said in the first one, to make mistakes. But when you intentionally set out to do something that's not gonna be attractive, it's going to give you a sense of, I don't care. Whatever happens, happens. I'm gonna have fun with this. And if you make mistakes along the way, guess what? It was part of the process. You're gonna let go of that. You're not gonna be stressed about it and you're gonna have a better time. And then sometimes the thing that you create ends up being one of your favorite. I think I've said this in another video, but my most favorite painting I've ever created was when I sat down. I was very frustrated, I was angry. I was angry. Painting is good for anger. And I said, I'm going to make something ugly and it was one of my most favorite paintings ever. I just let go of all the stress and I did it for therapy. What have you to lose? So the third thing is to use self calming strategies. So the first one would be just to relax your body. If you're walking around and your shoulders are up to here and you're super tense and you don't know what to do and your art is just a stressor for you, relax, take a deep breath, take two, three, 10, 15 of them usually hold tension in our stomachs and in our shoulders. And so just allowing those to settle in can help you to start getting ready because if you are going to the painting process and you're holding your brush and you are tense, you're gonna be holding it like this, like it's a weapon. You want to loosen up, okay, loosen up, hold it loosely, and then you're able to paint something that's more attractive, that's more enjoyable, and your body also is feeling calm at the same time. Isn't that great? You can also, for self-calming, work on your narrative. You can say things like, I'm getting better with every brushstroke. I'm a beginner and that's okay. I've come a long way in my journey. I have a long ways to go and I'm gonna enjoy the process. It will change how you feel and it will change what you do. And then the other part of the self-calming strategies would be just to walk away. You know, if you're feeling a little fed up with the situation, take a walk, go do something enjoyable, something pleasurable. Maybe you just wanna put away the dishes in the dishwasher, I don't know. Sit down and watch a show, watch a movie, listen to music, talk to a friend. I could go on and on and on because this therapist got self-care strategies for days, but I'm not gonna do that because I know you know exactly 
What comes to mind when I say something that will be healthy, that will calm you down, and that's gonna be something that helps with your artistic journey. So the fourth thing to help you with your anxiety while you are doing art is to do some very simple warm-up exercises, some painting exercises, like I'm showing here in this footage, being able to just take your brushes and start using your wrist to move around, to do large brush strokes and small ones, tiny little movements, large embellished movements, doing straight lines, curvy lines, zigzag lines, circle squares, all the basic shapes, um, using your brush to put light pressure down to, to medium and heavy pressure and then back to light pressure, which is going to change how the brush feels in your hand. Holding the brush loosely versus tightly versus on the tip of the brush versus the middle and the end of the handle. And all of these are going to help loosen up your brain as well as your hand and give you a sense of not only accomplishment, but of proficiency with utilizing your brush and your brush strokes and all the things. And the fifth thing that I would recommend to be able to kick your anxiety to the curb is literally just to take a very simple painting and paint it three ways. Because not only is it gonna help you to find your art style, but it's gonna get you into that mood of, I'm practicing something that I've done already once or twice, now I'm doing it a third time. You're able to see what it is you like about it. Maybe you want to do dark lines. Maybe you want to do dark colors, light colors, doing lots of layering or trying it wet on wet. And within that, you can find out what is it that I really like best about these styles, but also it's giving your, uh, your brain a chance to develop some muscle memory as well with your hand and kind of distracts you from that this sense of I'm a beginner, I don't know how to paint this one thing, but if you keep doing it, it's gonna give you confidence, it's gonna give you an excitement to keep going. Maybe you'll paint it five ways, maybe you'll paint it 10 ways, but just give it a shot. It's bound to create some new experiences for you and to give you a sense of accomplishment and help you out overall with your anxiety because nobody needs that anxiety. It serves no purpose. There is no room for perfectionism in art. So there you have it, people. I was gonna do five ways, that's so 10. And I hope that at least one of those things resonated with you and it's something that you can start practicing right away. Thank you guys so much for being here, for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss it on my videos. If you're interested in learning more from me, I do have a Patreon subscription option, the link is in the description of this video. And remember to click the link down below to watch Christy Rice and I as we discuss anxiety and getting it out of our art journey. Thank you so much guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Happy painting and happy mental health to you.